Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Script Poppy Channel. This is Nawaf, and today we're gonna talk about the annoying Apple Wallet passes. Apple Wallet passes are something that took me two months to figure out, even though it seems simple to implement. I mean, what the hell? It's just a pass that you wanna slap to your Apple Wallet. And that pass could be a ticket, could be an airline ticket, could be a concert ticket, could be any other information that you'd like to have in your Apple Wallet. It would have been something easy if, if it's something that you could completely generate from an SDK in your app, but for technical reasons that God, I don't know what they are, that's not the case. If you want to generate an Apple Wallet pass, you will need to follow this flow that I have presented in the screen right here in front of you. This is the end result and this is just an app that is a form. You can fill information about your pass here. This is going to be the link, the QR link in my pass and this is going to be the link for the thumbnail that's going to be on the pass because I, I can have an image in that pass too like my logo or whatever. And I have five fields in my pass. What fields are you talking about? I'm talking about this. Take a look at the pass format on the right with square barcode, which is QR code. You're gonna have a big space called primary field, which will contain one label and a value. And then you have small space under it called secondary and auxiliary fields, which will contain together up to four fields. And then the thumbnail is going to be here on the right. And then you can also play with the header and add text to it and your logo and so on. Everything is possible. You can control the, you can control the colors of the text on the pass and the background color for the pass. I'll just show you. So this is exactly what I coded here in the front end. Primary field, one value. Secondary fields, two values and labels. So auxiliary fields, four, uh, same as a secondary. And I can control the color of the pass. Let's give it a go. Name. No off occupation doctor. <laughs> Not really. I can never be a doctor. Uh, background color blue. Uh, text color white because it looks better when the background is blue. Now I click add to wa add to wallet. Check out my console, pass generated successfully. It goes, calls out my, ah, there's a typo in my name. But what it did, what it did, it called my server, created the pass, and then called my storage, and then downloaded the pass, and then it rendered it. Uh, and now it looks like this. And I used GitHub logo as the thumbnail. This is what's going on here. Your app will be calling the backend, which has an endpoint to generate the pass and sign it. It will get the pass details from your app, and then after it's done, Creating the pass, it will not push it back to your app, it will push it to your storage, right here. But then it will tell you that, hey, pass generation is successful, you can go ahead and download it, which is step three. Your app says, okay, pass generation has been, was successful. So then your app will talk directly to your storage, your cloud storage, or whatever form of storage you're using to download that pass and then display it to the user, which is, which is what happened here. On the back end here, I'm using Node.js to build my endpoint because that's the best language uh, there. And I don't care about optimization and any of that stuff. Okay, we're just generating a pass. We're now building a rocket. And then storage, I use Google Firebase Cloud Storage. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna close all of this and start from scratch. First, we're gonna do the boring stuff. We're gonna have to do the paperwork for setting up the pass ID at the Apple developer portal and so on. This is the step to do that. You're gonna have to create the pass identifier, then download the pass ID certificate, and then generate a bunch of certificates so that you'll be able to put them in your server that will generate the pass. So to do that, let's follow the steps. First, we need to go to the Apple developer portal here here at the portal you're gonna go to identifiers you're gonna go click on app ids here and then go to pass types id i already have two from before so i'm just gonna create a new one just to show you show you what the process looks like paste select pass type id then you could description demo pass uh generator identifier i will call it pass.com dot script puppy which is the name of the channel or the name of the company would be the name of your company instead and I'll call it Pass Maker is my app. It sounds like Pacemaker. <laughs> okay, registered. Then you need to go to the pass you just created. 
pass maker right here and create the certificate to create the certificate any certificate in apple you need to go to your mac your, your mac and from your mac you're gonna go to an app called keychain access and over here you're gonna go all the way to the top left of your screen click on uh keychain access there's something called certificate assistant request certificate from certificate authority click on it put your email address Common name, I'll just call it uh, the same as the project name, Pacemaker. No, sorry, Pass Maker. Uh, I'll just copy the same email over. To be fair, to be honest with you, I don't know what this CA email address does. I'm just gonna save the desk. Save this thing to the desk. Okay. Right here on my desktop. Now, I'm gonna just upload it back. Pass your, uh, my pass certificate name will be just pass maker. I'm gonna keep this name consistent across everything in my app, just to make my life easier. Feel free to do the same. You don't have to. Continue. Certificate created. Certificate download. Certificate downloaded. Now I'm just gonna keep it in my desktop because I'm gonna need it later when I build my server backend. So that's for the setup. Now that's for the setup online in the portal. Now we gotta set up the uh, the pass capability, the wallet capability on our app. So I'm gonna create a project now for the pass create uh, for the pass maker, and uh, we'll skip through it because you already know how to create a project. There you go. This is my this is my sample app. This app all it does is that it takes the information for the app, uh, for the for the pass, such as the links, the links for the uh, the, the 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 link for the um, content and the link for the thumbnail, and it takes the primary fields, secondary fields. Auxiliary feed, which is, which is the text that's going to be on the pass itself, and the background color and the text color for the app. Now, I just need to set this project to be able to use passes. And for that, I'm just going to go here, Pass Maker, and under Signing and Capabilities, I'll add a new capability to Wallet. Add it here. Here, I will say Allow Subset of Pass Teams. I refresh and I should see my new pass. There we go. This is my new pass that I just created. I'm just going to use that, tick that box, and just untick everything else from my other projects. Now for the coding part of the setup, I need to import pass kit. And over here, under all of these fields that I have, I need to just add the button that says add to wallet. And that will look like this. I'm gonna create a section, call it add to wallet. And in this section, if the uh, view is not loading, add, I'll just, uh, show the button which will have an action inside it for now it's going to be just add pass otherwise if it's loading then i'll just show progress view which will make it looks like it's loading just give it that it will give it that loading indicator while the pass is being generated that's the idea that's why i added this now let's see what the button looks like here we go so this is what I need for the front end. We gotta add a couple of stuff to be able to store the data for the pass and uh, handle it. So I will need to also here add a variable called state private var new pass and and it's gonna be of the of the type pk pass. I'm gonna keep put a question mark next to it because it's gonna be null. And also I need to add a new she sh a, a new variable a switch for the sheet that's gonna display the pass. So var uh, pass sheet visible. I'm gonna gonna keep it false for now, and then I'm gonna add a sheet to this body or right here, and this sheet will be controlled by this variable that I just created, and the content here will be the uh, the 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 pass view when I when I load it. So, okay, so that's done on the front end part. Let's leave it like this for now and start working on the back end. You could program the back end for generating your pass really in any language you want, Ruby, Java, whatever. But in this video, we're gonna use Node.js and the reason I insist on using Node.js is because there is really nice, easy to use Node.js library called Pascad-Generator. I'm gonna drop the link for this in the description.
Now I'm going to set up my backend project for generating the pass. I'm going to create a folder called pass and inside it initialize my Firebase functions project. Firebase functions uses Node.js. What it help you with is that it lets you host your backend code on there on the cloud. My project is ready. Okay, now I have to start installing the dependencies following the steps. So I have passkit generator, path, file system are the libraries that I'm going to need. I'm also going to need uh, Axios, which lets me do API calls. Open your terminal, yarn add basket generator. Also a couple other dependencies, yarn add and add Axios, which I'm gonna use to download images for my thumbnail. And I'll include them in my project. Now I need to prepare the uh, now I need to prepare the past template files. This is a model that's gonna contain the logos and the information for your past JSON file. This model, which will get then packaged and then signed, and that's how the pass is created. You can download the sample model from this link. I'm gonna put this link in the description as well. Let's open those samples that we downloaded to see what they look like. So here, you're gonna see a sample passes, and inside here, we're gonna, we're gonna be going for the generic pass. So let's click on that. We also here, we have pass samples that we can just drop into the simulator. Actually, let's give that a look. Let's try dropping one of these passes into the simulator just to see what they look like. There you go, this is an example. What we're gonna do is take this example and modify it to look however we want it to look like. Uh, this is what the generic pass look like, which we're gonna be implementing in this video. This is a store pass, you've got event pass, you also got coupons, and boarding pass. Generic is the most common one because it's generic, it can be used for anything, so that's what I'm gonna be using. So let's take a look at the files for that. These are the files for the generic pass. I've got the logos in different sizes. Um, and then I got the JSON file, thumbnail in two different sizes. Okay, this is the most important piece of the code right here, the JSON file. So I'm gonna fold everything, zoom out a little so you can see. This is what I have. Here's what I'm gonna do to, here's what I'm gonna do to create the pass template. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna move it to my other project and just modify it. So here inside my source code, here inside my source code, I'm gonna create a new folder called model, and inside it, I'm gonna grab this generic pass file and drop it inside here. I'm gonna need re, and then I'm gonna rename it to something different. I'll say custom, okay? And here is are the files. Now it's included in my project. Now we need to modify this this JSON to suit our needs. Um, first, I'm gonna get rid of the things that I don't need, I don't want, I don't need the backfields. The values here are hard coded. So what I'm gonna do instead is just, I'm gonna remove these and then I'm gonna add them programmatically later. So just delete all the objects inside each array like this. And I'll initialize the uh, foreground color, which is the text color to black and the background to white like this. I'll keep the logo text description, I'll keep it. But for educational purposes, I'm gonna change this to be this name of the the name of the field so that we can know later in the past what is what belong to what locations there's a there's an there's an object here for location which i don't need so I remove that for the barcode here it's set to format pdf for four one uh four one seven which i don't know what that is but i'm gonna need to change it to qr because qr and i'm gonna leave the message initialized to nothing then i'm gonna i'm gonna change it programmatically from the basket generator same thing with the authentication token service this and, and serial number. I'm gonna add all of those programmatically. Here, I need to change this to my pass type identifier, which I generated earlier. If you remember from earlier the video in the setup, it was pass, it was pass dot com dot script copy pass maker. And the team identifier, now you're gonna find, you need to log in to your Apple developer portal again to find the team identifier. It's gonna be this value right here. So on the top right of your uh, Apple developer portal, you're gonna need to copy this value and slap it here in the team identifier. Okay, so our model is ready. The pass JSON is ready. I'll keep the logos as it is, but you can change it however you want. Just make sure that the resolution is, uh, is the same as the picture that was in this example. Now after you have prepared the sample, now after you prepare uh, the template pass files, you need to start Generating the certificates that's going to be used that's going to be used for signing the pass. 
And for that, you want to follow this link here in the Pascal generator. They have an amazing guide that helps with uh, that helps you with figuring out how to generate the certificate. Here, I'm gonna drop this link also in the in the description box. So let's just follow the instructions. We've already done step five. We created the certificate, and then we took the certificate that, and then now we so. So we already done step number five. We downloaded the .scer file. It's right here. Now, so just go ahead and start from step number six. So for step step number six, you want to double click on your pass.cer uh, certificate file that you downloaded, which will add it to your keychain access. And then open the keychain access app again, which is right here in front of you. And then here, you will see your pass type ID right click on it and then click export pass type ID I'll just export it to my desktop I'll call it PassMaker. and then now you need to give it a password for here I'll just do test test just to make things easy okay click put on your computer password now PassMaker has been generated this is my p12 file now we need to do cup. We need to run these commands here in uh, the terminal. This is very simple. All you gotta do is just take this and plug in your certificate name, which is PassMaker in my case. So let's do this. First, make sure that you're in the same directory as your PassMaker file. So for me, it's desktop. And here, to make the copying uh, and pasting easier, just copy this command line and paste it somewhere, and then just fill in the stuff. Then fill in the, then fill in your own value. So password for me is test, like we said earlier, and the search name is pass maker. Copy this. Make sure you remove the dollar sign. Copy this. Go to your terminal. Run it. You will notice that a new file has been generated called signersearch.pim. Keep that. Now let's run the next command. Do the same thing just copy the command line and put your own values test again test cert name is again pass maker dot p12 copy this again into the terminal same directory run it and now I have another file called signer key dot pem now we just need one more file which is the WWDR certificate and you can get it from this link so, so from here you're gonna just find it you need either G1 or G4 so let's take G4 since it expires later download it save it to my desktop give it a name WWDR there we go now this one you need to click on it as well Go back to key. Go back to Keychain Access. Click on Certificates, and the certificate you just download is going to be called Apple Worldwide Developer Relations Certificate Authority. To make sure it's the correct one, make sure that you match the match the date with the one here. So the one we download is expiring in December. So it's not the 20 February one. It's the 10 December. Right click on this, export. But this time I'm going to export this one as .pem. I'm gonna name it WWDR, save it as my desktop. There we go, it's right here. So, so at the end you should have three PEM files, WWDR, signer kit, and signer kit. I'm gonna grab those three, create a new folder in my, create a new folder in my project, call it certs, and then just take all of those and put them there. So that's all for the certificates. Now we can start, so that's all for the certificate setup. Now we can start coding. Okay, now we can jump to looking at the code for the uh, for the endpoint. I think you all will appreciate how simple the code for the for the Pascal generator library is to use. I mean, just take a look at this. Let's just collapse everything so we can see how it looks like. I have all my dependencies here. Uh, I also added this piece of code which initializes my Firebase library. Because what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be generating the pass using this endpoint and then uploading it to my um, uploading it to my cloud storage. I also have added a uh, a function here that uh, converts hex to RGB because as you see in the pass JSON, it takes the color as RGB. 
so I'm converting here to RGB. Anyways, let's take a look at the endpoint code. It's fairly simple. Um, first, I call this PK pass class, and I give it the source of the pass format. So here I just tell it go look in model for the custom pass file where you can find all the pass model files. This is right this is right here. The one that we showed earlier with the pass JSON and the icons and the images and what's not. And then I tell it where you can find the certificate and that's why I need file system for. So I put the certificates like we did before in uh, the certs folder. Then the test is the password that we created that we put in the certificate when we generated the certificates in the in the previous steps. Now, after you give it that, it will. You can also supply it the details that we deleted that we we changed later to a static value here. So I can change description, log text, and uh, other stuff. So an authentication token. So this is right here. This is a dummy authentication token. And here I'm telling it what my web service URL is gonna be. So this after I push this to production, this is gonna be the URL. So I'm giving it here a serial number. I'm hard coding values, but you can change it dynamically bypass. Um, from my experience, this doesn't have any real the, the serial number and the web service URL and the authentication token does not really have any effect on how the pass is gonna work. Uh, I might be wrong though. Uh, I'll leave that to the people with better experience. Here I get the RGB color, the color in, I take the um, the color for my request and convert it to RGB and then pass it here, which also change it over here. And after that, the pass object get generated here, new pass, the, then you grab that. And here you can add the primary field and secondary auxiliary fields and the QR code. So for the primary fields, you can see that I'm taking the values from my API request. So in the request body, prime, I have an object called primary. There, I uh, get the label. So let me show you the rest of the uh, the rest of my fields. It's pretty neat. Now you're gonna be looking at this and wondering where the hell you're getting this from. This through my API request, which is right here. This is what my API request is gonna look like. Right now, I'm gonna just, for the purpose of demonstration and testing, I'm gonna pass it manually through Postman. Uh, but then the app that we were working on earlier is gonna end up passing this in the request instead. So this is what it looks like. And then it gets taken and put here. What about the thumbnail? That's what we use Axios for. So I use Axios here to call, to do a get request for the thumbnail URL, download that uh, the thumbnail data and set the image so here even though I ha already have a, a thumbnail set in my model I can override that here so that's great the add buffer lets you override any file in the uh, in the model so after I generate the pass I can get the buff the pass data as a buffer and then I could do the buffer whatever I want I could save it to desk I could, uh, as you can see here, upload it to my cloud storage in, a, in this directory. So uh, here, for the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to do both to show you what happened. So I'm just going to comment this out. This is going to let me save the pass to the, um, to the, to the, in the same project folder. I'm going to put this line here instead, mix, so you can see it right here. Um, okay, now let's run this and see what happens. So Firebase emulators start, which is the equivalent of node, node, node index.js in node.js. So I'm running this there. Now, there we go. The, the, the endpoint, the test endpoint is up and running on local host. I just grab this link. I go to postman and then I go over here, fill in the dummy data as we, like we said earlier, the colors without the uh, hashtag mark. Send it. Okay. 
So this request succeeded, pass generated successfully on server. Now, two things that should happen. I should be able to find the pass because I saved it on desk. I saved it on, uh, I saved it in the folder locally. Here's the pass that's been generated. Cool. Um, I've, so let's see how that looks like. I'm just gonna go to the folder where I have my, uh, let's open the pass here, see what it looks like. You can just view it from your Mac, you don't have to use an iPhone. Uh, here, it looks like this is good so far, but it looks like the auxiliary values has not been populated and the logo did not change. For To change the logo, we're probably gonna need to do this as well. Thumbnail at 2x. And Run this again. Start. But before we run this again, let's see. Let's also see how it looks like on on on. Uh, and I can just drag the pass file into the simulator. There you go. Now here on the iPhone, I can actually see the auxiliary labels too. Probably because the screen's big enough here, I can't see them. Okay, um, still gotta do something about the logo. But this is this is a good method to see to check if your pass is working. Create the pass on localhost. Uh, save it on desk. Save it on your save it in the same project directory. Then just drag it to an iPhone or open it in your Mac to see what it looks like. Instead of having to deploy it and then connect to the connect to your app and do it again, just test end to end every time. No, you can just check if your pass is working and looking correctly, just like this, which is great, makes life easier. So now let's just fix the thumbnail thing and try again. So I'm gonna just call this again, generate another pass. Cool, successful. Now, I'm gonna close this and drag the new pass that I have. See, now the logo changed because I now I changed both the thumbnails in the in the model. And if I open it, same thing. Cool. Uh, so that's how you generate the pass. Uh, now I want to show you that it got uploaded in the in the in the cloud storage too. Let me show you my cloud storage. So here, this is my cloud storage. If I go here, you'll see that the pass has been also uploaded to my cloud storage and it's ready to be downloaded from my app. Cool. Now this is done. I'm confident that it's, uh, that it's working correctly. So I'm just gonna deploy this to production and have my app access it. For that, I'll just do Firebase deploy. I got my production link for the endpoint right here. And now let's jump to the fun part. This is my favorite part. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna make this app call our endpoint and then download uh, download the generated pass. Everything is already set up in the front and we just need to change what this button does. So this is where I get my data here in the form. I got, I just collect them as variables, state variables. And now I need to create two methods. One that will call the API that generates the pass and another one that will download it. So generate pass and download pass. Generate pass is just gonna be an API call. I will also need a function to convert these colors that I have over here from the format they're in to hex so I can pass it to the server endpoint that generates the pass. I'm gonna paste this pre-written code and just walk you through what's going on. So what's happening here is that I take all the parameters that are collected through my fields down there, down here. I take all these variables and I just create my params here that's gonna be passed in my API request. This is where the get color hex comes in. I get this I get the hex as a string and I just put it here. So that's my payload. This is the JSON body. And uh, this is my endpoint, the production endpoint that I created earlier. 
post doesn't really matter you can make a post get put whatever you want in my case I just made a post then I set the uh, the content type header and I can set any other header I want you can add an authorization um, functionality to your endpoint and then add an authorization header here too as well next we take this params which is a string uh, which is a dictionary in Swift we convert it to JSON using this function JSON serialization data and I put the params here that's all I need then I start the uh, API request URL session dot shared dot data task just throw your request URL here and then I get these following response I get risk I get data which is the body I get response which is uh, the response URL and the headers of the response and I get error in case I get an error so here I just um, this is not the this is not the safe way to do it I'm not handling my error I should handle the error I should first check if there's an error and if there's not an error then I do this but I'm skipping that part just for simplicity here I get the response data I convert it back to JSON using JSON serialization and I make sure that it comes out as string and any dictionary so the same way it came in the response comes out here I just check if the response is success if it's not then I turn I return completion as true if not I return completion as false then I start the API request this way so this is for generating the pass the code for downloading the path is specific to the platform I'm using which is uh, Firebase in this case Firebase cloud storage so this will look different for you or it might be the same if you're also using Firebase but here I'm just downloading the pass from my storage and then uh, this part does not matter how you download it but at the end however you download it, at the end you'll get a data variable and then you should initialize a pk pass object with that pass data you downloaded and then set it set it as the value to new pass which is here okay then we're gonna render that okay I have set up my 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 generate pass my download pass now I just gotta use those so here's what I'm gonna do uh, when I when the user clicks on this I'm gonna set loading to true and then first I'm gonna self generate pass I don't need to do anything here the data is already collected and then I'm gonna get a generate pass result and handle that if the result is true the pass meaning the pass generated successfully then I can download it otherwise otherwise then set loading to false and say failed to generate pass cool now here we start downloading the pass download the pass uh, and then we handle the download pass result same way and then we say if download pass result is good then we can render it if not then um, we show an error so same thing fail to download pass instead though here here I want to uh, add so the pass was downloaded successfully it's ready to be displayed so therefore I'm gonna display the sheet for rendering the pass I'm also gonna turn off the loading here um, cool so this is good so far now we actually got to implement the sheet that's going to display the pass here. So here, up, the sheet is getting presented, but nothing is here. I need to add this custom. I need to create a view here that will contain the pass. So for that, I will need to create a new file called add 
path view. And this is going to be one of those unfortunate instances where you still have to use Swift, uh, where you still have to use UI kit with, uh, with Swift UI. I hate whenever that happens. I hate you working with UI kit, but unfortunately we have to do this here. So anyways, once, but it's, it's not a big code, it's 30 lines. Just put this here and now you can go back in your, sh in your sheet and just do add pass view and just give it you don't need this just give it the pass self new pass there you go well let's try this out see what errors we're gonna get because I'm, I bet we're gonna get some errors this, shit, this, this never works for the first time um, so I'll here just do name no off as my test field uh, I hit autocorrect and then I'll go here and I click add pass to wallet should be able to see what's going on in the console here it said fail to generate the pass why though ladies and gentlemen we're back a day later after throwing a fit over the error that we faced in the last minute failing to generate the pass but don't worry we figured it out the reason why my generate pass API call failed is because in my endpoint, in my backend, I was trying to use file system to write to my cloud storage, which is not allowed by my cloud storage. If you want to write something to Google Firebase storage, you need to use the Google Firebase SDK. So I solved this by just commenting out the file system write line of code. And then I redeployed my uh, endpoint on the same URL. Okay, so let's try it again. Name, no off, add to Apple. Take a look at the console. There you go. It worked. Nice. Now well, let's, let's try actually writing another pass that looks much better. So name, let's do occupation, um, fireman, age 25, uh, hobbies, shooting, um, whatever, whatever, duh, give it a uh, blue background because it's my favorite color white add now it's gonna create another pass nice now let's add that to Apple wallet and check our wallet look and I have it here in my wallet isn't this great I can remove it if I want by just click on it this pass details and then I can just remove the pass right here okay Cool, I hope this was helpful. Um, it took me a long time to figure this out, really, like two months, even though it's very simple. But I hope whoever is trying to implement this come across this video and is able to um, solve it faster. If you, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel, leave any comment, and keep an eye out for the next video that we're going to be releasing. Um, that's all. Have a great day. See you later.